Hi, George here. And I'll be showing you my five-step process to doing photo restoration here inside of Photoshop Elements. We'll be taking this photo and then taking it up to that right there, which I think is a vast improvement on this. And for this Photoshop Elements project, we'll be downloading the original picture, this one right here from online. We'll be doing that in just a minute. But if you want to see more Photoshop Elements projects, take a look at my channel. There's a link for that right down there. I have hundreds of videos on how to use Photoshop Elements. Also, take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's start off by just closing this file down. I'm not going to save that. I already saved it. In this now, open up the new image, which we'll be using here inside of Photoshop Elements. And for that, we'll be going over to Pexels. And I found this image right here. Pixels is my second favorite place for finding images. I like using Pixabay and also Pexels. And I'll put this link up here in the description if you want to use the same photo for practice on this project. Let's go over here to free download and download it to some location on your hard drive. I have a folder here I named projects and I'll place it right inside here. Just choose save. There we go. Okay, now that we have this downloaded, let's go back over to Photoshop Elements and we'll open up that photo right here. So file, open. And then go to your folder where you downloaded that image. Here it is. Choose open right here. And there we go. Now mine comes in as a floating window. You don't need that for this particular project. Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to dock that up here. And there we go. Now the very first thing I do before starting any project is to make a duplicate of the background layer. Right click and duplicate layer. Choose OK. Sometimes you'll see this step a little further on in my training if one of my steps gives me a background layer automatically but I always try to have a duplicate of the background there that I can then hide and not touch just in case things get messed up. And this is especially true if you're doing a photo restoration project where we're doing a lot of changes in the pixels on an image. You want to make sure you have a backup copy just in case. I might even make two or three backups as I go. Again, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so we're now ready to begin looking at our project. And the first thing that I like to do is to get my overall values correct in the image. And for that, I'll use an adjustment layer so we can come back and make adjustments later on that. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer right here. And the one you want is levels. That's that top option there. Now you have a choice here to use your previous layer to create a clipping mask or not. In this instance, it doesn't matter. This is useful if you have several layers and you want to have different controls on the different layers. We only have just the one layer, so that doesn't matter. Choose OK. And here is the levels control. Now, there are two parts of this. Basically, the bottom section here is used to tone down values, and the top is to increase values. So the bottom would make things less contrasty, the top makes things more contrasty. We want to improve our contrast a bit here. Mostly, I want to lighten the image up. It's really very dark. And that's our mid-tone control right here. Let's pull this to the left. You'll find a lighter, better value for that. Now, when we do this, we lose those blacks. So I'll go to the left hand side, grab this control, this is our black level, and I'll pull that back in to restore some of those blacks. And I'm going to be balancing this out with the middle and the left control until I get pretty close to what I want. If you go too far, it begins to block up like that. So don't take your blacks so far that they begin to block up. I may have to go just a little further than I want to on this on the bottom down here because I need to have a bit more black up there. But we'll do a little bit of an adjustment on that as well later on. Okay. Now you can brighten this up more by pulling in the white side. The values in here, this is the spread of the values in the photograph. Notice that there are almost no whites. Here's our white value. So I'll pull the white in a bit. Now when you do this again, don't go too far or the white begins to block up and that again causes you some problems. So pull it in. So it's a good value. And I think that's a lot better. Now right down here is a little eyeball right there. You can click on that to show or hide and then compare the original and our adjusted version. And the photo's already a lot better just by making that basic adjustment. And let's close that down. Okay, that's our first step. Just get our values basically where you want them. Now, one of the reasons why I'm using the adjustment layer here and not just doing the enhance and adjust sliding right over here is because with the adjustment layer, I can come back and adjust this later on. Just double click on that thumbnail it brings back up the levels and I can then tweak my adjustments. So it allows you to come back and readjust your adjustments later, which you can't do if you just go up here to the enhanced menu. Okay, so now come down here to our background copy. And the second thing which I do is to get rid of the biggest scratches and breaks, things like that. There's a lot of breaking in here on the emulsion, which gives us all these white lines. I want to take all this stuff out. And this is actually the part of the project that takes the most time. So I'll walk you through a little bit of this, then I'll pause the video 
and I'll go ahead and then finish that. I'll probably spend an hour finishing this step off camera. Then I'll bring the camera back up again and get back into the training after that. So we'll do a little bit of it here and then I'll pause the camera and finish that one step, which again takes most of the time when you're doing photo restoration. It's these really bright white cracks and things. Now for this, let's zoom in. There we go, nice and tight. You can see we have a couple of things going on. We have our cracks in here. I don't see any actual scratches, but we have cracks. Then we have some discoloration, some spots and things over here. You can see it mostly on her face really in there. So for this, let's hold the space bar down. You can move your image around and I'll start up in the upper left-hand corner and I'll get rid of all this white stuff. And the best tool I found for doing this is the spot healing brush over here. And I usually start off right down here where it says proximity match. That's usually a very good choice. See, this has a real small brush size. Let me bring my brush size up a bit. Is it 63? It's beginning to show us. Type in 100. That's a better brush size. You can kind of see it right there. So I want it larger than the item that I'm moving or replacing. I also want to have this as a soft edge brush so that I'm not seeing the edges in here. Now, these different types behave differently. Proximity match tries to match what's near this. Create texture we'll be putting in texture. And content aware tries to grab images from around and then use that to fill. I will normally start with proximity match. This is usually the best choice. Sometimes this will flatten out texture and you lose texture. Let's just see how this goes here. I'll just brush over this like that. This is also going to take a few strokes. As you can see here, I'll have to hit it a few times. Sometimes more, sometimes less. It really depends. I also like using this in just these little short strokes like this. Now you can just tap in here. It'll take you a lot longer. And I don't like doing big long strokes like that. That tends to not work as well. Sometimes it works out fine, worked out good here. But most of the time I found that shorter strokes, just like that long, tend to work out the best. Now you don't have to remove this all the way. It depends on how it looks. If it looks okay, then that's as far as you have to go. Sometimes leaving a little line in there blends in with the content around it and is just fine. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be coming in here and doing these short strokes. Now, if I was doing this and this was removing my texture, then I might try the create texture option right down here. Now the content aware, I found that tends to give kind of odd results. I've never actually found a picture where the content aware option was the best choice. So again, I'd say 90% of the time, 95% of the time, proximity match is the right choice for this step. And then I'll go through and just do all of these for the whole background here. And then once that's done, we can then move on to the next step. Like I said, I'll be spending about an hour to do this. And I'll turn the camera off. I'll spend my hour doing this part of the step and I'm just gonna be doing just these white cracks. I won't be doing anything else. So you're not missing anything in that part. We're just getting rid of these white cracks in here. Now, some spots like right in here, it's a bit tricky. We have these, these lines. Try to come in here and just do little short movements to leave as much of those lines in there as possible. Luckily, I think we get away with losing a bit there and it's not going to matter. But be careful if you have detail, be a little careful around that. And the more detail, the smaller the stroke you want to be doing. Maybe even just tapping like that. Okay, let's just do a control zero, see how it's looking so far. Looks a lot better up here already. You can see we've already done about a quarter of the picture. I have this bit right in the middle there to do, but looking much better. So go ahead now and I'll pause the video, finish just all these white cracks, which is really the problems with the background. Everything else looks okay on the background. Once that's done, I'll bring the video back up again and we'll begin working on our foreground subjects. Okay, that step is done. I've removed all those scratches back there. I didn't do anything else really. I notice there's still a lot of grain and so forth in here. That's fine. I wanted to keep all that in there. You don't want to fix everything or it's going to be looking fake. It'll, it'll look over-processed. So you want to leave quite a bit of that stuff in here. There's a few black spots here. I'm leaving all those in the background. We'll be cleaning some of that stuff over here on the main subjects though. But if we pull down and just take a look at this, the background's cleaned up fairly well. As you can see, I've left in just a few things. But I've taken out all of those big white spots which were really standing out. Let's go to Control Zero here. And it's already a lot better. Okay, let's now take a look at our subject. We want to make sure the faces are okay and remove the worst of the problems in here. Can't do much about these dark spots down there. That's some staining. I'm not gonna even bother with that. Everybody cares about what's up in here. But we'll take a look at the dress first. Things show up pretty well on a white area. So there's some stuff right down in here. I wanna clean up just a little bit and then we'll take care of the faces. So this is the next step, which is to work on our subjects into our photo retouching for the subjects. We've already taken out the white stuff. 
So now I care about the black spots that are the most problematic. So back to our tool here, same tool. We bring the size up a little bit, there we go. And same technique, but this time taking out the dark spots as opposed to taking out the white scratches. So I'll just go in here and just do this, just go through here and get the worst of these. I'm not gonna try to do everything. If you do everything, then it begins looking over-processed and looks real fake. People note that this is an old picture, obviously. There's no way of getting around that. So they expect to have some imperfections in there. You just want to minimize the imperfections and take the worst ones out. Like I'll leave about that much stuff in there, maybe a couple of spots right here, take out, and then just get rid of the worst of the worst. And that would be at just the right level for a decent looking photo repair in here, photo restoration. Again, keeping little short strokes like that and just working on down and taking out the worst of these. There's not that much in here, of course, at this point, most of the problems are going to be on those big scratches and breaks, those kinds of things, and big tears. That stuff, these little spots in here will be a minor issue compared to that. So this goes fairly quickly. Okay, just a little bit more of this, and I think we're just about done with that for the outfit. Okay, a few bad spots down here. We get down to this level. But again, same technique, just little sharp pulls like that, and it should be just fine. And just focus on the worst of the worst. That's all I really care about. Bit of a problem right here, a bit of a splatter. Let's take a little bit more work to get this down to the same level as the rest. But again, don't overdo it or it'll begin to end up overprocessed and will look fake. Just a bit in here and that's looking pretty good. And again, as you can see here, I'm only going for the darkest of the darks and then leaving the rest in there. And that's enough to clean things up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yep, that's fine. Let's check the top half of the dress. I'm looking down the space bar, of course, to make that move. Just a little bit up in here. That might be a button, so I'll leave that one alone, but well, maybe it's annoying me, so I'll take it out. And you know, just get just a bit of this right in here. And just work your way around. Again, this area is not as critical. The critical area is going to be the faces. And we'll take care of those as a second half of this step. Okay, let's take care of the groom's outfit over here. Same exact process, just go through and get the worst of the worst out and leave the rest in there. A couple of scratches right here and here, or possibly the edge of his jacket, hard to tell. There's still a little contrast in that area. We'll be doing a little bit with the contrast here on this step, but not much. We don't want to go too far on that. That tends to block things up, and again, it makes them look bad. You want to keep as much original detail in as possible. So if you do sharpening too much, or if you do contrast too much, it begins to block up your details. Okay, so this is looking pretty good here. There is a scratch right there and right there. Take those out, a couple of those spots. Down here is getting into that darker stained area. We'll be leaving that alone. There it is. I'm not gonna do anything down in here. Just a little bit of this stuff right in through there. And that is pretty good, I think. We're fine on his outfit. Okay, now let's check our hands. That's good and then faces. Just look for little spots in the faces. And once again, you wanna be very careful about this. You don't want to begin to have this soften up and lose any of that photo grain in there or it begins to look really fake. You don't wanna have that. It's obviously an old photograph. We wanna keep that old photograph appearance. We just don't wanna have any really obnoxious spots in here. Okay, a little bit right around in the hat up here and up here. His face is actually pretty clean, so that's lucky. Do that, okay, let's go over to her side. She is worse. You know, start off with a large brush here and this little strokes. Notice I'm pulling the strokes here to match the contour of the face. And that tends to make this a bit more effective. I'll get down through here. And at this point it's getting pretty tight, so I'm going to make my brush size smaller. And this is the left square bracket. Smaller brush, and let's zoom in on this. You can see we already have some pixelization happening in there, so we have some problems with that. That's the original scan that the photograph came from. Could have been scanned at a higher resolution, but that's what we have to work with. So I'm gonna back out a touch. I don't wanna be in so far that I'm seeing that pixelization. It just makes things more confusing for me. Okay, let's just back out a bit here on the brush, much smaller brush, and come in and get these little fine spots, and just work around one spot at a time at this point. And again, the one thing I don't wanna do is begin to have the retouching here the restoration, begin to smooth the skin out. We wanna get rid of the spots, but not smooth the skin out. Once the skin begins getting smooth, 
then you're going to begin having a fake look to this, an overprocessed look. So it takes longer this way, but it's well worth the extra time spent for a better job. Okay, a couple little spots right in here. Those out, kind of little blemishes right there on the lips. Again, just some cracks in the emulsion, I think, at that point. Okay, and then quickly, just a couple of spots in the hair. Not much I can do with that. I can't really tell if she's wearing a hat or not in this picture. I'm assuming she would be just from the age of the photo. Probably this right here is a hat, and the rest of that is hair. But again, no way to really tell. Okay, I think that looks nice and cleaned up. That's about as far as I want to take that to keep from getting over-processed. Now, let's do a little bit in here to help this out. They're both a little low contrast on the face. The space bar right here. I want the faces a bit more contrasty. Let me just back out just a little bit here. I'll just use the zoom control there. Looks pretty good. Now for this, it's a careful technique. Go over here and grab this tool. This right down here is the burn tool. And set this at shadows. And it's a real large brush size, as you can see here. This come right over the face. It's larger than the face. And just tap on the face just once, just like that. Let's try a second time. Second time is too far. Control Z to back out of that. And have it way down here at only 18% on the exposure. Let me show you that again. Just one tap and then one tap. Makes them just a little bit darker in here. And that helps bring out the faces. And I can do one tap up here on the top of the hat. Even that was too far. So Control Z to back out of that. Okay. Now we don't want to be doing any sharpening really because that's going to block things up. But we'll try one tap on the sharpening. Again, keeping these adjustments really small. Here's the sharpen tool. It's right here. The fairly small brush, I'll bring the brush size up with my right square bracket. I'll get this larger than the face, and then it's one tap. That was okay. One tap here. A couple of taps is too much. Let me back off on that. I'm going to leave her alone. So real, real small adjustments on that. Okay, control zero to show again, and that's looking great. See how that really looks better? Even with just that small adjustment, it really does help quite a bit. And I don't want to take anything else any further on this stage of this. Okay, it's looking really nice. Let's just double check this. Let me show the background here. And here we go. You can just kind of see right in here as I toggle back and forth. There's before, there's after. That one touch with the burn tool, darkening the darks down, really helps out an awful lot. Okay, that takes care of that step. Next step now is we have this vignetting in here. There's a lot of it over here, right-hand side. Let me change my tool here. There we go. Left-hand side a little bit. There's a lot here. There's a little bit down here, a little bit down here. Now, because the vignette is kind of different at each one of the corners, I can't use the standard trick, which is a filter and correct camera distortion, and then use the vignette tool here to remove that vignette because it's not an even vignette. So you can do this using the exact same trick we just used on the faces, but instead of darkening it down, we're going to lighten it up. So go over here to that burn tool again. This time come over here to the dodge tool. And it's a real large size brush. As you can see here, this on this image is actually 1,300 pixels. It's a pretty good size brush. And then come just outside like that. And then just tap once or twice, just like that. And then bottom right-hand corner, just a couple taps. And left-hand corner, just one tap. And that lightens those corners up a bit. I'm not taking out the vignette completely. If you do, it begins looking fake again. So leaving it in just a little bit, but just lightening it up just a touch. Okay, that takes care of our vignette. Now the last standard step here that we'll do is to clean the colors. I want this more of a straight black and white as opposed to this sepia tone effect. So we'll take care of that. And then I have one bonus step after that. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of the coloration. Now for this, go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and you want the hue saturation. Again, using that check mark doesn't matter. So just choose okay. And the sepia tone is in the yellows and reds. So let's go over here to channel and come down to the yellows and then simply back off on the saturation on your yellows. There we go, it's already a lot better. This as I do this, we see more red in here in that area, but that's pretty good. Don't go all the way, it looks too blue if you do that. Just back it off a good amount, but not too far. Let's now change this to the reds. Do the same thing on the reds, just back off the saturation. So I'm kind of pulling it down in little steps. And that's pretty good right there. And then a little tweak. Since we did this, let's do a little tweak up here on our levels. So click on the levels. Bring this back up again. Let me try bringing in just a little bit more dark into this. Okay, that's not working. So I'll pull the middle control to the right just a little bit. And that will darken things down just a touch. And then bring the right side over here, the whites, up just a little bit. 
making it a little bit more contrasty again that way. There we go, and I think we've got it at that point. I think that's about as far as we can take this. Let's now see how this looks. I'm just going to hide those two layers, and there's the original. And let's bring our controls back in again, and here's our cleaned up adjusted version. Okay, now for our little bonus step here, which isn't always necessary. That's why it's not one of my normally listed steps. It's a bonus step. Let's say you wanted to have this printable on an 8x10. So we're going to adjust this for 8x10. Obviously, I could just crop in, lose some top, lose some bottom, but I don't want to do that. So the first thing I'll do is go here to the top layer, on our top layer already. Use the special keyboard shortcut. It's Shift, Control, Alt, and then tap the E key. And what that does is it merges all these layers below to a new layer up here. We can also more easily see our differences. So there's the original, and here's our repaired version. Much, much better. Everything is now on its own layer. At this point, save this file because I'm changing the file size. So I want to have a protection in here just in case things go wrong. Let's do a protection. So let's first just save it. Standard save. There we go. It's taken care of. Let's now do a file save as. And I'll go into the same projects folder. Let me just change the name down here. And I'll call it old wedding 8x10. Choose save. So I can now go back to the previous file if I wanted to stay at that point. And then we can experiment here on our cropping on this file without damaging anything we did previously. Again, just as a safety precaution. So let's come down here to the crop tool, which is right here. I have the crop set at 8x10. And notice this is doing what I was saying was one option. That's to cut into your image. I don't want that. So take the image crop out here, the crop, and pull this out until we are out at the size of the image vertical right here. And then let's center that. Click on the green check mark. That expands the image by that much. Now we have white in the background. That's because the background layer is showing. Hide the background layer. And we get transparency back there, left and right side. Now we need to fill that in somehow. Depending on how you want to approach this, you could do clone stamp tool and extend things out with a clone stamp tool. It's probably your best option, but it takes the most time. But it can be done. What I would do there again would be to make a copy of this. Let me show you just, just a touch of this. Right click and let's duplicate that layer. Choose OK. That's our safety layer right here. Here's our working layer. And then simply zoom in and let's do a little bit of clone step. Again, I'm only doing just a touch of this as a demo. I'm using a different technique on this one instead, which is a more interesting technique. Grab your clone stamp tool. Let's bring our brush size up. I'm using the right square bracket right here. And about right like that. You hold the Alt key down and click on a spot. Bring it over here and we just pull the image out. And because we have this window, you have to align this up a couple of times. I would do each one of the horizontal alignments separately and then fill in the in-between stuff just to work out the best. Kind of like that. And it does a pretty fair job. And you can, a little bit of work in here, a little bit of patience. You can do a real nice job this way and expand it out so it fills that 8x10 area. But it does take some time. It does take a lot of care to get this exactly right, especially because of this window in here. You need to have your window panes match, things like that. That's why I'm not doing it this way for this project. I'm just going to delete this layer. Bring this layer back up again. Control-0 to fit on screen. And still be doing this with an AI tool. Now I'll be using Dolly. You know, take a look at that in just a second. And that has some limitations. First off, it's a square image format. So let's change this to a square image. Go back here to our crop tool. Let's grab a crop here at square five by five works out fine. And here's our basic square shape. Same thing again, expand the crop out here so it fits top to bottom, center the image right about there. There's our new crop. Now, because Dolly works as a square, we need to have this square. We'll be cutting off most of that stuff as not needed. We only want the, just the inside part of this, but it has to be square. The other limitation with Dolly is that it only works with images up to 1024 by 1024. They're fairly small images. So we need to bring the size down here to fit that size image. Again, we're only using this just for the background area. Now, because of that, I'm going to save this out and then shrink the saved file so I don't lose my working file here. So we'll first go up here to File and Save, like that. And then File, Save As. And we'll save this out as a PNG file. Right here, choose Save, choose OK. I'll then close this and open up our PNG file. So there we go, get that out of the way. And then Open. And here's our Save PNG. 
I went with PNG because that saves the transparency. If we did a JPEG, we would lose the transparency. It would become white. We need that transparency. Okay, let's now bring this down to the right file size for Dolly. Let's go up to image, come down to resize, image size. Let's bring the resolution down to 300. That's really way too high. And then size, 1024 by 1024. That's good. You know, we're doing a reduction, so I want to do best for reduction. And there it is. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. File and save. And we're all done here. That's all set to go. Okay, now let's go over to Doll E and I'll show you where that is. And I'll use the AI to fill in these sides for us. Here we go. This is at labs.openai.com. I'll put this link in the description. It's a free tool. Come down here where it says upload an image. Click on this. And we want to have that one that we just downsized. That's our old wedding, 8x10, right here. Choose open. We don't want to crop, so skip cropping. We're already at the right size, 1024 by 1024 right here. And this is the area that dog is going to be working with. We'll then click on this check mark right here that's placed. And now go over here and give it a little description, just what we're looking at. And then Dolly will figure that out. This looks like it's an outside of a church, like a garden sitting outside of a church. And I'll just do that as my description. We'll choose generate. And Dolly is going to give us some AI generation of these sides over here. It will give us four things to choose from. They may not be any good. One of them may be exactly what we need. Can we only need just a little bit of that? So click on generate and we'll see what Dolly comes up with. Now, sometimes this tool doesn't work. It depends on how busy it is. You may get a warning notice about it not working. Just try again in a little bit, give it a half hour and come back to it. It's working right now. See that little purpley line? And there we go. Okay, the first one's not too bad. We just need just a little bit in here and a little bit over in here. And that one's not too bad. Let's now click on the next button here. That one's even better. It's a bit too dark here, but it's even better over here. And that one, it's better up here. Kind of a strange blotchy thing there. I might go with that. It looks pretty good left-hand side. And our final one, that's even better. I mean, I have to worry about the words over here. I think this is pretty good. So let's go ahead, we'll accept this. And then click the download button right here. I've already downloaded a couple of samples. This one's even better. So I'll put a little notation on this one. Use this, choose save, and this downloaded. Okay, let's now go back over to Photoshop Elements. And let's bring up our working file on this. I'll just close this down and done with that. And open on our PSD file. Here we go, this is the working one. And let's open up our new image from Dolly. So file, open. That's the one right here. And that's gonna be too small. So we'll fix that. Just take this and drag this over here. Comes in real small as you can see. That's okay. Put it in the bottom corner right here, grab this corner up here, drag it up to fit like that. Hit the check mark that brings it in again. Pull this underneath the original. There we go. So here's our, our original on top. There's the dolly underneath and that matches nicely. Kind of a little bit of a mess up here. We'll fix that. Let's now merge these two layers together. Click on your top layer, hold the control key down, click on your second layer, right click, merge layers. That allows us to come in and do some retouching in there. Let's now bring this down to the eight by 10 that we wanted. That will cut off some of the side stuff. So back to our crop tool, reset this for eight by 10. There's the eight by 10. Let's just adjust our positioning. I think that's pretty good right in there. Hit the green check mark. And we've now used the artificial intelligence to fill in those sections on the left and right side for us, making this very easy to fix. A couple little things to touch up. Most of that's okay. I'll zoom in here and the little S right here. So we'll just Take care of that with the clone stamp tool. There it is. Let's come over here with the alt key down and click and come over that S and just paint that out. That's fixed. Hold the space bar down and right in here, this spot right here and right here. I'll see a little bit of clone stamp here. Again, I'll go for a smaller brush size and then alt and click. And I'm just gonna come in and just go right over that edge. Just soften that up a little bit. There we go, doesn't take much. Actually looks okay just past that, just a little bit in here. And the same thing right over that line there. And that hides that, maybe a little bit right in here to hide that line there. And I think everything else is okay on that. You can almost see a line here, not quite, but just in case I'll come in and do just a little bit of something in here and a little bit of something right down through here, just hide that a touch in right there. Okay, control zero. Back to fit screen, and there we go. There is our final photo restoration. Let's just compare this to our original now. There's the original, and here's our finalized version.
Make sure you check out my channel for a bunch more Photoshop Elements videos. I have hundreds of videos on how to use Photoshop Elements over there. Also, if you want to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, how to use all the menus, all the tools, all the panels, everything, to click on my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Make sure you click on like. Also, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing Photoshop Elements videos all the time. If you don't want to miss anything, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.